Have you ever wondered how some players seem to play so fluidly you can barely see their fingers move? That has to do with finger flailing. How much you move your fingers and finding the optimum place for your fingers. If you just noticed, I use this because it was easy to show up on the uh, screen, is if you move your fingers, you move your fingers all the way up, versus just above where it needs to be in the key your single speed here I can basically play twice as fast as one could with the same finger speed just by playing on the key work itself now this is an example of course on a clarinet or open hole flute or any other open hole instrument you can't put your finger on top of the rings because you're going to muffle the sound but you can find the optimal location for that the reason I'm using this is it's easier to show. If you move your fingers up high and bring them down to play, you're moving them really twice the distance as you would if you're putting them in the optimal location. If I do this, same finger speed as this. It just looks faster because it's going half the distance. So you can actually play twice as faster by learning to play with your fingers where they need to be in the optimal location. When I first started taking saxophone lessons, my teacher said she would sometimes have to tape people's fingers to the top of the keys to keep them from lifting them so high. And this is so when you get to really complex pieces, you're not moving your fingers so fast that you have to move your fingers essentially twice as fast just to stay up to tempo. So if you have to move your fingers twice as fast because you lift them really high, and if I move my fingers twice as fast, I'm still playing twice as fast than you. So we have to learn to minimize the energy and the movement of the fingers and finding the optimal location. For a clarinet, open hole flute, we have to find the proper efficient location to not affect the tone. And we're going to review that right now with the clarinet. So what you need to do when you do this is listen tonally and determine how your sound changes the pitch changes as you move your finger closer to the tonal now I'm going to be using the CG key I'm going to be playing basically C below the staff and we can easily hear the pitch change when my finger gets too close you can do that for every key that you have on there and they're really fairly consistent once you get used to it so let's get right to it now with it open we're going to slowly close the finger down you hear that and I have not covered the tone hole yet I'm just getting close to it so we don't want to cover the tone hole completely we want to find the place just above it right there is the most optimal place for that particular key and we do that up the ring keys too, right now. So with that, we can easily learn how far up from the key we have to lift our fingers and you want to do that for every open tone hole you have and then practice in front of the mirror ask someone else to take a look at how you're playing because more often than that when I used to give lessons students would always say oh I don't do that it's like well I wouldn't be mentioning it to you if you didn't you know and back then we didn't have video cameras um, like you do now just with a cell phone where you can play in front of a mirror but you have to be critical of your playing don't just assume you don't do it anyways that's a tip about playing clarinet and flailing fingers because if you go and lift your fingers all the way up you have to move them twice as fast as someone else who doesn't do that and when you get to pieces that are really really fast that extra finger movement your fingers are going to get more tired than someone else who just fluidly does it and just moves their fingers quite easily anyways i hope that helped don't forget to get a thumbs up like share and subscribe and we'll see you next time